Hi, badasses. Thank you for joining us this week. We are so excited. We have Missy here from Explore Box, and we're going to be talking to her. Um, thank you for all your love and support. Um, please like, share, subscribe, um, rate, review, anything and everything you can do for us. We will take it. Before we start talking to my good friend, Missy here, we're going to talk about our badass of the week. Badass of the week this week is interestingly enough, another dude we're uh, adding to the badass ladies club uh, this week. Mark Groves. Yeah, it's not Paul. Sorry, Paul. (laughs) Sorry, Paul. (laughs) Maybe next time. Uh, Mark Groves, who is a human connections specialist, AKA create the love. If you follow him on Instagram is a guy who posts like no BS relationship advice and really goes there with people's self-sabotage techniques and things that, uh, you misrepresent as love and connection in, uh, sometimes intimate, but sometimes not intimate relationships. And honestly, like Mark Groves blows my mind every day almost Mm -hmm. where I'm like, wow, dude, I love his approach to helping people with human connections. Um, and it's inspiring for us. So we want to, uh, honor what Mark is doing on Instagram, really trying to help people out and, um, help them make more solid connections with other humans, not just on online uh, relationships, but definitely in a face-to-face kind of method. So a uh, badass box on the way, Mark, we would love to have you on the podcast and talk a little bit more about what you're doing with your work. Awesome. Let's get to the important business today. Let's get to the important business. Mm. Missy. Hello. Oh my gosh. It's been so long since I've seen you. Missy and I go way back to (laughs) cosmetology school. And I'm not even going to say how many years ago that that was. (laughs) We won't talk about how many years ago that was. So Missy is the owner and founder of Explore Box, where members discover new paths to pleasure with a quarterly subscription box delivered directly to your door and is the owner and founder of the Dirty Minds podcast, which is also recorded right here in this studio yes. you're the one who got us hooked up with yes. this gig Thanks so for that. Yeah. thank you, you are so welcome. um not to mention you're also a mother a <laughs> certified cosmetic injector senior laser tech and esthetician so things, um things. you can find her at bella md oh, medical spa yes, dallas that's right. yes yep. and um Making people more confident one syringe at a time. Oh, you know, you love that cheese. Did you bring yes. wine for that cheese? Well, Hi. you know, I mean, I love it. No, I love it. Um, I've actually looked at your menu um, of your services more than once, and not gonna lie, like yeah. I, I really would love to come be a client sometime. Come see me anytime, yeah. anytime. Yeah. Just text me. Okay, text cool. Me. <laughs> All right, so. Um, where to start? Where to really? start? So like, I just met Missy today, but obviously like we are Instagram follower friends yeah. and in, I've been able to keep up with how you guys know each other just from everything that you've shared with me about mm-hmm. Missy. Um, so really like my big aha is, you know, you and I are just getting into the podcasting gig, um, and but we're also in the beauty business and so is mm-hmm. Missy. And so It was so inspiring to me to see your story only because I can tell that you have a really well-developed business in beauty um, and working in the medical spa and doing the, you know, clinical esthetician kind of work that you do. And so you like have a day job. Yes. But you also (laughs) have these passion projects that I can, that I know just from the little bit of time that we've spent developing this it has been a long time coming for you to be able to develop some of these like big ideas into tangible things that you can hold in your hand. Um, so yeah, that was a big motivator for me about like Missy has got to be a badass of the week. We have got to get her on this podcast yes. because I want to hear more about the evolution of how you've kind of crafted your career in life. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, <clears throat> well, it's kind of a, I guess, a, a, if there's any way to better describe it, it's been a, a, journey. It's the fucking yellow brick road. So, (laughs) you know, I met Jess in beauty school way back when, um, and did like a year of hair and Mm -hmm. decided that that was not at all what I wanted to do. Um, so after doing that, I wanted to explore more of the aesthetic side of the, the industry. And so 
you know, I kind of, I got a job at a med spa, started exploring laser school. I wanted to see if that was really the route that I wanted to go, um, decided it was, um, a good friend of mine, Stormy kind of helped connect me with, um, one of my mentors in the career or in the industry, uh, Michelle Dillion. And so she became my mentor uh, she opened up a laser school. I was her first graduating student. And so from there, when I graduated, I told her, I only want to work for surgeons. Like I only, yeah. that was like goal that I had set for myself that I would only be a laser tech at a plastic surgeon's office. So my first job was at a plastic surgeon's office. And for many years thereafter, only worked for surgeons. Why I had that in my head, I don't know, but I did. <laughs> Eventually, um, I ventured out into doing injectables and helped open a med spa in Uptown Dallas. And so that kind of opened my eyes to a little bit of a different atmosphere. Um, you know, a surgeon's office is very different from just your average med spa or your typical med spa. Um, it's a little more lax in a, in a med spa industry or in a med spa that's not part of a surgeon's office. Yeah. It's a little funner environment. So, um, I started to build my brand as an injector there and that's been five years that I've been injecting now, four or five. And, um, I have very, very loyal, sweet clients that come to see me from all over the place. And I'm very thankful and grateful for that. Um, but last year I decided that I wanted to, there, there were conversations I was having with friends and family and clients, you know, like y'all are hairdressers. So y'all get it. people sit in your chair and it's like therapy for them. You know, mm -hmm. it's free therapy. It's girl talk. It's, you know, a safe space to kind of talk about things. And so I found that over the years, being able to connect with so many um, women and men and just like getting to know them, building friendships and relationships with them that they confided in me and asked for advice on, you know, dating and things like that why I don't know, but <laughs> it just ended up being a conversation yeah. we would have. So I'm like, this is not, um, I'm not the one, but Hey, <laughs> like, but I'm here for it. I'm here it's for fine. it. If you need advice, we're going to give it. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of what kind of got the wheels turning on. Like, you know what? I really, there aren't too many platforms where it's okay to talk about, you know, sex or taboo subjects and things that people kind of steer away from. Um, mm -hmm. and so with Explorer, you know, I found there are a lot of women out there or, you know, people in general, but stay at home moms that have kids all the time that can't, you know, go into these sex toy shops and they mm -hmm. want to, you know, they want to buy things. They want to experiment, or you find that the husband, you know, orders something online and it's entirely the wrong size, <laughs> right. Or something, no, right, right. 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 something he thinks you might like, right. but and you're like, actually, yeah, right. No, not going right. to happen. <laughs> so I kept hearing, you know, there's a lot of ways that people want to bring new, explore new things in the bedroom, um, but aren't able to, whether it's, you know, restrictions with having children all the time, whether it's a traveling partner, whether it's, you know, somebody else buying it, not knowing what to buy. So I wanted to create something that people could order online. Cause at the end of the day, that's the way the industry is going. Yeah. Um, you know, order something online, very discreet packaging that can bring these items into the home without making the awkward purchase. You know, sometimes people don't like to even buy condoms at the store. Yeah. You know, it's very right. awkward and they kind of, so I wanted to be able to give them something that could come to their door. They takes the embarrassment out of going to the store to buy it. It takes having to find childcare to go into an 18 and up store. Yeah. Um, and it keeps our partners from buying things we may not want to try. <laughs> right. So, you know, all of our items are, um, you know, medical grade silicone. They're the toys that are in there are not intimidating at all. Um, they're all very, but we also strive towards the sexual wellness side of things. So it's not just, you know, toys and lubes. I don't ever want people to think explore box is a sexual, it's like a sex toy thing. It's a sexual brand. It's an intimate wellness brand. Um, and so we bring a lot of like pH balancing washes, um, you know, chafing powder for men's private parts, we different like candles. Right. And There's other stuff. things in there that just bring people together or help address a, a, a wellness need in that area. Um, so that was kind of what started that. I wanted to just be able to, to do that. Um, and then, you know, the podcast kind of just was a branch off of that as a more of a place to talk about it. You know, yeah. like here I can give you these items and you can, but if you have questions about the items or if you maybe want to know a little bit more about how to give a better blow job or, you know, trying anal for the first time or whatever, <laughs> yeah, things people, talk about that. right. Yeah. This yeah. Is, you know, people don't want to ask those questions, but they want to know. Yeah. And right. I'd rather them, you know, have it in a more girl talk type of setting versus, you know, taking to the internet. And then you kind of, kind of don't know, you go down a rabbit hole of all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. So, um, but yeah, so that's kind of where 
this started. It's not that the love of injectables has gone away. I just would like to build a brand I'm really passionate about, um, and be able to help couples of all kinds, um, in any way that I can. And, and eventually that'd be my main focus and my main, um, you know, business versus injecting. That's awesome. So. Um, speaking from a consumer side, <laughs> Yes, um, yes, thank you for I, your support. <laughs> I, I subscribed and, you know, I it started as like, a well, I got to support my girl. You right. know, like yeah, I, I when Explore Box came about, I didn't care what was in it. I was just like, well, I'm going to support the cause because my girl Missy needs yeah. subscribers. Right. And so I'm all about um, helping out my girlfriends where that's, you know, concerned. But um I have, I look forward to my explore boxes and it's an education for sure. Um, and so I, I just always really look forward to getting them and I really Thank like you. them and everything, but have you found that since doing explore box and dirty minds that people are even more forthcoming? Like do people just outright come to you for like um. the advice more so than they did before? I feel like it's still a lot of just like friends and you know people that know me know that I'm very open about my sexuality I always have been and so I feel like it's those people that have made you know comments or questions before but they're a little more forward about it and then of course you get the randos that are like you know it's typically a guy asking a really stupid question in the DM, and I just am like I'm not even gonna answer that it's not what this is here for right yeah. um but right. no I mean I don't I don't feel, I, I hope to one day get, you know, more people to tune in or to just get more active with the podcast, I guess, and get more involved and send, you know, we do get occasional questions or people that I don't know will send us a DM and say, yo, you guys should talk about this. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, cool. I'm yeah. just still so fascinated that I don't know them and they know about my podcast. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, wow, somebody that I don't actually that know has is been listening. so cool. <laughs> yeah, like getting people that we don't even know suggesting topics and stuff. Yeah. We're like, oh, people That's like us. People actually yeah. listen to this. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. What's, like, what started as like a fun thing to do with friends. It's like people are actually listening to me. So those are kind of cool. I do get some, you know, random ones here and there, but I'm hoping as we grow as a, a you know, company and a, a brand that people just overall take explore and the dirty minds podcast as a, you know, a safe platform to ask questions. And, um, we did partner with Rosie, which, um, if you guys don't know what that is, yeah. it's, uh, an, um, uh, women's health app. So basically all the subscribers for explore get, um, a discount on their app with Rosie. And so basically Rosie, um, if you have a question about vaginal health or about, you know, masturbating, things like that, it's actually owned by Lindsay Harper, who's a gynecologist and a sex, uh, here in Dallas, a sexual doctor. And so she, created the app. And so it's kind of a really cool thing. That's awesome. I love yeah. This. So check love out that. Rosie. So if you yeah. have a question where you're like, you kind of want to ask your gynecologist, you don't want to make an appointment or you just want some tips or advice. Or yeah. I saw that on your Instagram, but I didn't know what Rosie yeah. was. Yeah. And so I a, missed the live. Yeah. No, no. So, yeah. It's a, she, it's an app and it's created by a, a doctor. And so it's a really, really cool, you know, it brings that wellness aspect um, back to explore. Even though we do have toys and things, we also very much focus on sexual wellness. That's it's probably awesome. my favorite part of the whole concept though, honestly. Like I am not afraid to go into a toy store and talk to the people that work there. And and like, that's just, I've just never been afraid of that kind of thing. But I've learned so much just listening to the podcast and watching what goes on the social media promotions, you know, mainly because I'm trying to learn how to be a lady boss like Missy is, you know, yeah. and I'm like, okay, so how does she do this? <laughs> um, but aside from that, I am really inspired a, by how inclusive the brand is. Mm -hmm. When you talk about sexual wellness, I guess my first like knee jerk reaction when I heard about explore box is I was like, okay, so it's like a box for couples or whatever. I don't really feel that way anymore. It is like yeah. a box for like, it doesn't matter if you have a partner or no. a spouse, you know, it does. It's about, um, understanding yourself mm -hmm. on a level that you know what you like or what you're into or mm -hmm. what you're not into. Or when you find somebody who's maybe into that too, this is how you go there, you know, and that all of those things I think are so needed when you talk about sexual wellness or you talk about sexual health, mm -hmm. that it's not always about 
what's going on with a partner that, you know, a lot of this is about getting to know you. And that is magic Mm -hmm. when it comes to helping people with sexual wellness. So, and that's, that's a one thing that I hear. That's probably the most common thing that I hear from women is that either they've never masturbated like solo before, or they've never owned a toy. Mm -hmm. They've never tried a toy, or I've even met women who have never had an orgasm with a man. Yes. And so it's just like, you know, at, and, the, and this is like women into their thirties. I mean, women who have had plenty of time to try and, and so I, we do stress that a lot and any gynecologist is going to stress that as well. Um, you know, I'm not by any means a doctor or a sex therapist, but I know enough to know, to like spread the word and to help promote, you know, sexual and solo exploration and knowing your body and knowing what you like, what you don't like, cause you really can't have a healthy sex life. If all you're doing is just essentially letting them do what they need to do. Going through the motions. Right. Right. You're going through the motions. You're not enjoying it. Sex should be fun. It should be enjoyable for everyone. And, you know, so it's super important for your mental health, your physical well-being to release those endorphins and to know what you like and what you don't like and and have a healthy sex life, whether it's solo or with a partner. Well, and until you figure that out, sex is frustrating, you know, like that there's a lot of people that have such a hard time. And I know I had a really hard time with it before I figured those things out where I was like, okay, yeah, this is fun, but not as fun as it's supposed to be. You know, like I knew that there were missing pieces there. And so if there had been an explore box brand, when I was figuring out how much faster would have, I, you know, figured out these things that totally changed the game for me, you know, when it came to having a happy sex life where that was concerned. Mm So, um, that's the exciting part I think for this is that it fills that gap for people that are like, yeah, I do sex and it's whatever, you know, but, um, it should be fun. It should be stress relief. It should, you know, be blowing Mm -hmm. your mind no matter what's going on. And that there's a, uh, no one way to do this right. You know, that everybody has a way to get to where they're headed with the game. Uh, (laughs) And then that all of those things are awesome and fun. So I love that piece of it. It's good. Yeah. Um, So do you feel like you get any more judgment from people since you moved into this game of talking about (laughs) sex and toys and everything? Like 1000%. Um, So I kind of knew going into this, I was, I was raised in a very, um, Catholic upbringing. And so same. Yeah. Oh, I heard your podcast about Catholic school. Well, I mean, no, I I feel like I remember that about you. It's just, you know, light bulb moment. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I knew that when I started talking about this company and and building this brand that, um, I would get some backlash. I would get some backlash because I'm a mom. I'm Mm going to get backlash because at the time, um, you know, I was, I've divorced, um, you know, backlash for, from family and, and, but a lot of it's been support. Um, I do feel as though people, and it's usually the people who aren't experimenting, who aren't exploring Mm -hmm. themselves, who aren't really having the best, healthiest sex life that are very close minded to talking about these things and having, you know, that those are the type of people that, you know, have negative things to say and it's okay. They're just you know, I just yeah. Right. And I'm sorry. You should yeah. have more orgasms. Right. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe if you happier. did, you'd be a little happier. Okay. <laughs> um, so I try not to really let it get to me. Um, you know, I think, and I, I guess this is the first time I really talked about it publicly. Um, my family has been the most to pull away um, and to yeah. judge and not my like parents or immediate family. They're, they're pretty um, supportive, but you know, aunts and uncles and, and family members like that have made it very, N- known that they don't approve of, of this and that's okay. Yeah. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, I feel like any entrepreneur should take pride in what they do, no matter what it is that they're passionate about. And, 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 you know, if nobody's paying my bills, if, if that's how I'm choosing to put food on the table for my kids or whatever, then so be it. You know, I'm not selling my body. I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm making a healthy platform for people who actually need this and want to take this advice. And so I've gotten some, some negativity, but you know, I just, you know, if I lose clients or friends over it, they don't, they don't really know me, but I feel like a lot of people who actually know me, they've been very supportive of it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, and there, I hang out with pretty like humble, open-minded people. Like yeah. at the end of the day, that's just my tribe and who I surround myself with. And so those people are also there and very supportive of my business. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah. That helps man yeah, uh, to does, have the yeah. tribe for sure. Well, and that's no small feat though to, cause I know like, <laughs> I agonized for weeks about putting the word badass in the podcast, you know, cause I was like, yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> what will my great aunt think of this? Like, I don't know, you know, like that there are so many, uh, 
voices in, you know, in your head that talk to you about like what's right and what's wrong and is this good or is this bad, you know, and to lock onto something and say, no, this is what's good. Um, and that this is going to help people, you know, that if it's something you're doing because you want to help people that Mm -hmm. that really can't be a bad thing, I think. Yeah. Well, because we've talked about the, um, that we have a want and a need to do like charity work or to Mm -hmm. volunteer somewhere. And we're like, does anyone really want the word badass like on their label, you know, like, will they even put our logo on something? Right. I don't know. Um, (laughs) To which we've just kind of said, well, that might not be our organization. That may not be our organization. And whoever would stand behind us, then that would be the right fit for us. So I think that that's kind of navigating with, you know, using cuss words or or sexual Mm -hmm. things. You know, you you tend to you have to find ways to navigate into the groups that are accepting of this, you know. Mm -hmm. And so whether, you know, whether I choose to donate to erectile dysfunction or whatever yeah, versus, totally. you know, hungry kids. If that's right. the way I have to go, it's still helping people. It's still, it, yeah, it's just all about finding, um, your tribe and people that are okay with this. You know, tattoo conventions aren't going to give a shit if your thing says bad ass, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be perfect. You know what I mean? So yeah. you just find what works for your brand. And, you know, sometimes you kind of have to pivot from where you originally thought you were going to be with it if, because that's not the 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 tribe that you're attracting. Yeah. You know, and in prepping for this episode and, you know, I, God, we met when, well, I was 20, you were probably 18, 17 or 18. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so we were babies Mm. essentially, um, that, you know, I've watched your journey and thing, you know, throughout the years. And I I was thinking, and I was talking to Laurie about it in prepping for this episode that I was just, I was curious. I was like, I wonder if, um, because of your faith or the fact that you have two boys, like, and I, I'm even, um, a little guilty of it myself being like, oh, well, how does she balance that, you know, like being a person of faith, but also like, yeah, you know, in the sex industry and like all that, like how, yeah, how that works out for you. Um, you know, I struggled with that a lot this last year of like, you know, I, well, I, I pulled away from the Catholic faith years and years ago. So Mm -hmm. a long time ago. Um, but I kind of, I've attended a non-denominational Christian church for the last seven years. And so, you know, I've been, I've got rebaptized like a year ago, I think, or two years ago. Um, you know, so I am a woman of faith, but I guess how I, I don't even want to say the word justify because I don't feel as though I have to justify it. Yeah. My relationship with God is my relationship with God. And at the end of the day, you know, Christians are having sex too. And there's yes. nothing to say. We talked right? about that, so right? Like, like, most all of them. Yeah. They're all doing it. They're making babies. Right. right. You know, post-marriage, of course. Yes. But, you know, so it's like, I don't, I don't know. I, being a woman of faith, I just don't, um, I raise my kids, you know, in a Christian household. And just because I talk about sex or because I talk about, you know, sexual acts, things like that, I feel like it doesn't really make me less of a Christian. Yeah. Um, people will view it as such because, you know, of course, and I, and I'm very, um, pro LGBTQ, you know, and that's obviously not a very Christian thing essentially, or so they yeah. say. Um, so, you know, I don't, I struggled with it in the beginning. I now I just, especially 2020, I just really have a fuck it. Right. Attitude, like, honestly, like, y'all, like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> this at this doing. point, I'm going to do what makes me happy. I'm going to do what I'm passionate about. And, you know, at the end of the day, if I'm doing me for me and my kids, I really don't need anybody's approval. And I feel like when you as an entrepreneur and as you guys are growing into this podcast, you at some point you just have to you learn to just let that shit go. Yeah. You know, like you're going to lose people, you're going to lose friends, you're going to even lose family members. Um, but if they really loved and supported me, it, that wouldn't be the issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? So being a woman of faith, I don't I still do my Bible studies. I still attend church. You know, I still I'm very strong in my faith just because I talk about sex doesn't make me less of a Christian. So, you know, I, um, Adelaide is four years old and is in dance and I struggle with, um, well, we're not allowed to sit in the lobby anymore, but before COVID when we were allowed (laughs) to sit in the lobby, um, you know, and all the moms were kind of like waiting for their kids to get Mm -hmm. out of dance class. Um, I grew up in this studio. Okay. So I feel like it's a safe space for me to be who I am, but it's hard for me to sit in a waiting room full of other moms. Um, I won't say names, but there is a mom whose 
kid is in Adelaide's class who is married to a very conservative um, uh, politician in the area. Um, And, you know, the other moms like look very normal. (laughs) And there I am in like my leather studded jackets and my black lipstick and wearing all black and like all that kind of stuff that I can't help but to be like, I don't think I belong here (laughs) sometimes, you know? So like, do you find that with your boys, friends, moms? Yeah. Yeah. You do. uh, Sometimes, you know, I do. And even like, you know, for, for example, and this is more of it now because of my kids, but, um, I was putting together, I moved and I'm putting together an office in my, in my new home. And so I found this really badass picture, but it essentially was like an abstract picture of boobs, yeah. but I'm like, Oh, that's, that's cool. That would look really cool in my office. Yeah. Black and white all the, and then, you know, I kind of thought about it, reined it in. Cause my son is 12, you yeah. know, at some point those will actually look like yeah. boobs to him. Um, <laughs> but when it comes to being around, you know, I've never really been a PTA mom and, yeah. you know, but I've also found that like, you'd be surprised at how many of my clients who I think are a little more conservative or, you know, moms, there's a client of mine who actually is a mom to one of the kids at my son's school she mentioned listening to the podcast, you know, so you'd be surprised Mm -hmm. at how many people you wouldn't think would be supportive or, you know, and maybe they, maybe they aren't liking the page. Maybe they're not like, you know, promoting that they listen to it, but they listen Mm -hmm. and whether it's positive or negative at the end of the day, they're listening. And, you know, I feel like sometimes there are times where I feel like, you know, as my son gets older, you know, and he, they know I have a podcast. They've been in the studio. They don't listen obviously, but yeah. you know, he's on YouTube I mean, he yeah. could stumble across this page and be like, Oh shit, there's my mom. My mom. Yeah. And at which point we have that conversation, right? You'll you cross know? that bridge when right. you get there. Yeah. But I just, I try not to, I try not to let things like that hinder me. You yeah. know, at some point you just have to do what you're going to do. And again, if it's what you're passionate about, you know, say the cuss words, talk about the sex, you know, just don't wear what the fuck you want to wear people are going to accept you or they're not. But what major, like, you know, like people don't accept people who are successful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you spend your whole time trying to, you know, please people look at fucking what's his name, Steve jobs or yeah. you know, all these people that right. made it big. It's like, they were not really accepted back in the day, but they did what they were passionate about. And here they are. Well, and what great lessons for kids to watch their parents do that, you know, and to do something that, yeah, maybe is surprising at first, but that you can talk about it and explain, you know, the, the why behind the business and the brand, right. um, that that makes your kids want to grow up and go for things that they're excited and passionate about too. Exactly. Whatever the repercussions may be of that. Yeah. And that that's valuable. You right. know, that's, that's what parenting is. I, know. You know, I, like I hope that from. Adelaide gets that as she's oh, older, she you know, got it. That, like, yeah. <laughs> well, you no. know, sometimes I'm <laughs> she's mindful of it, you know, that, and I don't remember if we've mentioned it before. I know that I've talked to you about it, but having badass. Oh, we have club. not talked about it on the podcast yet, but it's hysterical. Well, Adelaide's and- reading now. I'll just say <laughs> oh. that. Yeah. Well, and so, um, well. you know, she read something because I have this shit all over my house, yeah. you know? And so she's like, <laughs> bad ass ladies club. And so I had to kind of <laughs> explain to her that. So badass isn't really appropriate for you to say, but it's not a bad word, but it's like a good bad word. But let's not say 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 that. Yeah. Yeah, Like (laughs) the cool ladies club. Yeah. That's uh, it. I didn't think about that before. Yeah. You know, and she wasn't reading when we named it. She wasn't reading. And it just was. That happens fast. So far away in my mind. You know, they're going to hear it at school. They're going to pick it up. You know, it's like, whatever. I want my kids to grow up and know that, you know, both of their parents, you know, did what they wanted to do. They're yeah. about, you know, my ex-husband and I were both entrepreneurs. And so it's, we've lived this hustle life for forever. And it's just, you know, whether it takes us here and, but I build a fucking empire off of sex, then so be it. Bring you it. Know? Right. Like that's what pays for that Xbox. Yeah, and totally. my son's not going to say shit about it. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he's going to, yeah, they it. won't No. Um, so do you feel that, um, men and women are treated differently for the same sexual behavior entirely. Yeah. What is that about? It's a fucking double standard. That's what it's about. It's, it's, I feel like it's getting better. Well, no, actually, (laughs) no, no. no. Now that I think about it, no. Um, (laughs) you know, I I was just having this conversation the other day about men. So men are making only fans accounts, right? Yeah. And like, 
showing whatever they're showing and doing whatever, um, which was new to me. I guess I didn't realize guys are doing it too. And so I feel like men are stepping more into that realm of like, you know, whatever you want to call that, whatever you want to call like advertising their body for money, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what you want to call that classify that as. Um, and so I feel like because men are kind of crossing that line, straight men and, you know, homosexual men, they're kind of crossing that line over that. I feel like it's taking less off women, even though it is primarily women. Um, I feel like this double standard of, you know, a woman can have a healthy sex life. She can know what she likes. She can masturbate daily, have sexual partners and just know what she likes. And that's not okay because, you know, it's okay for men to masturbate like right. 10 times a day right. and that's fine. But if a woman buys toys and she's comfortable with her sex life or talking about that, then it's, it's still shunned upon. It's still looked down upon. And I don't think it's right. I think that at the end of the day, no matter what, um, you know, male, female, you should know your body and it should be okay to talk about sex. It should be okay to have, if you're being safe and you want to have multiple sex partners, it sh that shouldn't be frowned upon. No. A woman shouldn't be considered a whore because she, you know, has two different guys that she's sleeping with because she's single and it's agreed upon and whatever the case may be. But a guy can go and bang a chick out of town, come home, bang his wife. And that's okay. Sure. Or, you know, right. He's high fived for it. Right. His he's friends got are probably piece. like, how do you do it? Right. He's got a <laughs> side piece right. and you know, he's got a side piece. He's got a main piece. He's got two others and that's okay. Cause he's a dude. Um, but if a girl's like, yeah, I'm single, I'm being safe. I'm using condoms. You know, I'm pre protecting myself. If I want to sleep with this guy this weekend and sleep with this guy that weekend, it shouldn't be frowned upon if men, if men do it too, sure. you know, I think this whole, I feel like there's been a shift over the last four years of, you know, women being empowered. Um, but it's still, I feel like I'm not anti only fans. I just feel like that's almost taking that negative. It's, it's taking us a step back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm pro, you know, if you want to show your body, then show your body. If you're confident and you want to do that, that's fine. But I think the whole payment thing kind of takes it back a little bit. Like we're women, we're trying to be more empowered and more confident and body confident, um, about our bodies and showing our bodies. And that's cool. Um, if you want to do it via photo shoot, via Instagram, via whatever. Awesome. I support that one time, you know, 100%. But I feel like when you start throwing, when you start monetizing on that, I, th I think it starts to take us back. You know, it puts a negative tone because you're selling your body essentially, or so they say, even though you're not actually doing that. Um, sorry. I don't know where I was going with that. I just feel like I'm not anti only fans. I just feel like it's not the, while we're trying to stand up for ourselves and say, it's okay to be a woman and it's okay to go to a nude beach and show my boobs. If that's what I want to do on my vacation or whatever, then that should be okay. But if you're paying for it, then it, it people start to see you as a whore or people, you know, mm -hmm. so they, they put a, a negative tone on it and they know? feel entitled to what you're selling, you right. know? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, right. it makes it a lot more transactional that way. Right. And right. I, I can't imagine that that's easy long-term. You know, no, like I've yeah. not done it, so I can't speak to it, but I, I feel like the longer you'd be in that transactional space with your body, the harder it would be to have like autonomy of your body, you know, right, and right. even, um, on any platform. I mean, it takes away from like, I'm going to take this racy photo because I feel confident and I want this hanging up in my bedroom for me and my husband because I'm confident or I want to walk around a nude beach while on vacation with my husband or whatever, or my significant other. But then when you're taking it so you can make money off of it, yeah. I feel like you're not really doing it because you're confident or because you're trying to set the tone that women can do these things. Men walk around without shirts all the time yeah. and that's okay. Um, and without underwear on and you can see their outline and that's mm -hmm. okay. Nobody says shit about that. But if a woman walks around without a thong on or without underwear and you can kind of tell like it suddenly becomes this thing, an right. issue. Right. but I think when you start, you know, getting paid for these photos. It's no longer about empowerment. It's more about like, I'm doing this because I need to make money. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I just feel like it's taking away from the, like what we're trying to, to get rid of, which is that, um, that stigma, that stigma, yeah. that it's a bad thing. But I think, you know, it just, I don't know. It's uh, definitely very much a, a deal still. Yeah. I think, um, you brought up taking pictures and because they were racy and your husband would like them and it totally flipped a switch in my head. I recently, for the first time ever, just did a boudoir Ooh, photo shoot. Okay. They were so hot. Ooh. I, she looked great. It was 
<laughs> one of those things where it was like an anniversary yeah. of our first date. Yeah. Um, it was 20 years. And I was like, oh my God, that's been a really long time. And I have a friend who is a photographer and she had just been posting all of her boudoir stuff. And I was like, oh my God, that would be so fun to yeah. have her come over and yeah. I could buy some fun outfits or whatever. And so I did it and was a little bit nervous about it. But once we started like taking the pictures, it was fun. Yeah, and yeah. I had a blast doing it. But then when she sent the pictures, I was like, and Jessica and I've talked about this. We do hair and makeup. You're like, I get the glam squad thing. You know, like I know about angles and not like, I understand how you make pictures look good. I was blown away at how good they looked. Yeah. Like when I got them back, I was like, oh my God, is that me? Like <laughs> I loved it. And I also told a lot of people, I'm so glad I was in my forties when I did it for the first yeah. time. I feel like if I had done it when I was a lot younger, it would have meant something different than mm -hmm. it means now. Um, there are obviously lots of things. There were lots of pictures that I was like, nope, nope. No, you know, like yeah. that I was totally judgy, but there were so many more that I was in love with. And it makes and, you feel good. Yes. It and I you, absolutely yeah. want to get one framed and hang yeah. it in my bedroom, you know, like, oh, yeah. and so there's so much empowering, you know, aspects to doing something that's way outside of your comfort zone like that. Mm -hmm. I also, it's so funny. Cause like, they're not, there's some naked ones, I guess, but you know, they're like not naked, naked. I want to show them to everybody. I want to be like, right. oh my God, check out these awesome photos <laughs> right. that I took. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm all about women doing things or showing, you know, yeah. like what they want to show and feeling confident and good about that. And I know the boost it gave me oh, to yeah. do that yeah. and just keep it in my circle. And, yeah. you know, like, so it was great fun and, uh, yeah. it was the best gift ever, by and the way, if you haven't yes. done it, if you, should, you haven't yeah. done it, absolutely just do it. Cause it was a blast. <laughs> yeah. Your partner is totally going to. I love that. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, even if you're a single girl and you, you know, you go through a breakup or just, you need, you just are feeling yourself and you want to do, do something for yourself. Yes. 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 Photo shoot. Do a shoot. Absolutely. Whether you show anybody those pictures or you mm -hmm. don't, at the end of the day, you're going to feel confident. You're going to feel comfortable being naked. I yes. mean, I think that's the whole thing that people are nervous. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be naked in front of this photographer. But like, they Still, don't care. get in yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. own that and own your body and be confident with it, whether you, you know, show it to anybody or not. It's well, nice to do it. And Charlotte was so good. Um, at the photo babe on Instagram or Charlotte Lee on Facebook is who did my photos. And she would do this thing that, you know, I would like make a face or whatever. She'd be like, yes, yes. You know, and, she, <laughs> and she'd get me like all worked up and I'd be like, oh my God. Yeah. This is so much fun. You know? And yeah. we had a great playlist going on and it helped because yeah. she was so fun yeah. and made it so comfortable. So I did a, I was like a semi nude shoot. It was like partially nude. Um, no, I mean, it was partially nude. Um, I'm, like, wait, <laughs> I'm trying to think back a few years ago and I brought a girlfriend with me cause she was just, she's just good at styling and things like that. And so I brought a girlfriend with me, you know, the photographer was a, a dude, but a good friend of mine. And so he had good music going. I brought my girlfriend and she, that's exactly what she did. She was like hyping me up the yeah. whole time. And so, you know, you have a little glass of wine, you got music and then you got your, your best bud there hyping you up. I mean, it's a different level of confidence and you leave just feeling so good yes. and so confident and yeah. That's For sure. I, I did a boudoir shoot yep. when I was in my 20s mm -hmm. and then you did yours and I was like, I should do one every decade now. I was already <laughs> saying that. I was like, every <laughs> 10 years totally I'm doing do this. It. Yeah. Um, but what's funny is, you know, like those scammers who always like find you somehow and send you <laughs> mail that's like... If you don't pay me five thousand oh dollars, <laughs> I'm gonna release your nudes. You're to like, which I know it's totally fake that they don't have the pictures, but there was this thought process in my mind that was like, so do it. So you're right. Because yes. I look fucking Bring amazing, by the way. Like, um, everybody needs you know, to see that. Um that yeah, like when you're just feeling good about yourself, I'm like, fine, release the pictures. Yeah. I don't care. It'd like right. just so Whatever. somebody, it's a funny story. Somebody recently Googled me and I didn't know that they Googled me and they made a comment about, um, when I did this rainbow photo shoot is what he is. It was a dude, of course. So, um, he was like, when, you know, when did how how many years ago did you do that rainbow photo shoot? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And so he screenshots me a picture and it was a picture from a sh that shoot that I'm talking about. Mm. That was like partially nude. And I was in this like neon 
bodysuit thing and the background was really like colorful or whatever. And I'm like, how did you find that picture? And he was like, I just Googled your name and it popped up. And I was like, oh, oh nice. <laughs> I've okay. never Googled myself before. Awesome. Um, so then I Googled myself and it, I mean, it doesn't show a whole lot. You can see like a little bit of a nip or whatever, but I was like, I look hot. So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Whatever. yeah. I'm like, well, that was actually a few years ago. No, I don't look like that right now. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you don't really know. I mean, I guess it's to, depending on who you're shooting with or whatever. And even then that shoot, I mean, I'm sure it's out there because it was on social media at some point in time, whether it was my Facebook or Instagram or his, the photographers, right. whatever, which is fine. Um, but Google yourself after yes. you take new photos. Just just learn. Learn. Uh, Make sure. I haven't done that. And this was a guy that like, I didn't really know that well that I guess was interested in then he Googled me. He's so I was like, mm, okay, I probably okay. should know that that's out there in case somebody <laughs> Googles me and considering dating me, that's, you know, but whatever mm. I owned it. It's fine. Yeah. Um, I haven't done that. I feel like 10 years ago though, that that would have been a lot bigger deal, but anymore now everybody has oh, like mostly naked pictures yeah. of themselves out. And so if there's one out there floating around to you like that and you look great, yeah. then just add it to the pile of pictures of me online, you know, right. like, <laughs> okay, fine. congratulations. You have like my professional headshot and then you get <laughs> and then <laughs> right, right next to it. it. It's fine. It's your lucky fine. day. Yeah. You know, you're welcome. <laughs> oh man. So, uh, what type of podcast advice do you have for us? Uh, as far oh, as, uh, working out this gig. I want to hear that. I don't, ha yeah, I like those podcasts. Yeah. I don't have any, <laughs> I mean, I love it. Um, so I, I like the boundaries episode a lot. Um, and then also I picked up from your, um, I don't know what episode it was. I was listening to, uh, your affirmations you do with your daughter every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I have boys and I guess, I don't know if it's because I have boys. I never think to do those things. Um, I, I thought that was a very valuable piece of information that I started incorporating with my kids, um, is Aww. on the way to school, trying to at least do like one affirmation with my boys. Cause I feel like, you know, male or female, you still need that self-love yeah. and that affirmation. So I picked up that little tip from one Aww. of your episodes. Um, but no, I just, I think you guys are doing great. Honestly, like I don't, I love your podcast. I think it's I know. Great. I love your podcast too. And I was actually a little jealous with this latest one, um, the love languages. Oh, yeah. um, I was like, she beat us to it. Great. We had it. I love it. But I know. To add to the whole like idea of dirty minds, like as soon as I listened to that episode, it was what Aubrey and I talked about all night that night when he got home from work. I was like, okay, so remember when I read this book like yes. ten yeah. years ago? I listened to Missy's podcast today, and they were talking about it. And so we, you know, I remember us talking about it when I read the book forever ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but we had such a different and better conversation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this last time around. So yeah, it's, a uh, we're kind of sister podcasts a little bit, uh, working off the same wavelength. I like it. I, yeah. I, you guys should do an episode. I feel like you should do an episode on it regardless yeah. of whether oh, yeah. I did it because sure you will. need to, it's a different outlook. You we'll guys have a different, you know, we didn't go like too deep into it. We just kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, so I don't, you know, I feel like it can, you can go really deep into those. I mean, and Heather, do you follow Heather? Um, and she's an injector. What's the name of her podcast? Sex, love and injectable. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, she well, did totally a whole series on Enneagrams. Oh yes. And that was really good. I need um, to take an Enneagram. Well, test. you know, Taylor, yeah, did yeah, an Enneagram seven. whole <laughs> yeah. session on pretty please, um, on that podcast. It's uh, so interesting and yeah. there's yeah. so much to learn about it. There's honestly, you could really go in depth with that. Yes. Um, just on one alone. I mean, it's, it's really interesting. So I think different you know, aspects, y'all should totally do a love language one. And then, you know, your aspects can be entirely different than what the one mine is. But I feel like, um, y'all's, y'all's topics are great. Your podcast is great. I'm living it. So, awesome. you know, yeah. and I appreciate you guys having me on. Yes. And yeah, Dirty Minds is awesome. So if you guys haven't subscribed to Dirty Minds, Dirty Minds it's for sure. awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. So tell us, we try and ask most of our guests this at some point, if you could roll back to when you were like, say cosmetology school age 22, oh maybe a little older than that. I was 18. Yeah. She was, okay. she was a baby baby. So add a few years to that. Okay. Yeah. What, what kind of advice would you give 22 year old Missy? Oh, hell. If you know, if you knew then what you know now, don't ignore the red flags. Okay. <laughs> don't fucking do it. Cause they are there. You know what they are. Don't ignore them for love or the potential of love or in anything, in any friendship, relationship, um, don't ignore red flags and trust your gut. That is something that I learned the hard way yeah. many oh, times man. over. So I feel like that's, um, that would be my main advice would be just don't ignore red flags. 
Yeah. You know, a lot of work that I'm doing on myself right now is, um, seeking validation outside myself, um, because I don't really trust myself. So God, even at 33, I'm almost 34 years old yep. and I'm still fucking working on it. Hey, you, you should always be working on yourself. Yeah. I feel like that's, there's no shame in that. I, yeah. I read more books on, you know, just self help and, you know, learning, growing business. Um, a really good one you guys should read just being entrepreneurs is the hard thing about hard things. Um, yes, I want to read that book. I was reading it's, it. um, about halfway through. It's really good. Um, but it's for 2020 is definitely a must read. You really oh, need nice. to read it for this okay. year. But I think, you know, you should always be working on yourself in some way and growing to be better. Um, and building on your own confidence, whether it's, you know, internally, physically, sexually, you know, just being present in all of you and what yeah. that means and what makes you, you. So I love so it. Awesome. Well, thank you. thank you so much for coming today. Thanks for having and, me. I have enjoyed uh, it. And we would love badass. to partner with you sometime, maybe like a giveaway Absolutely. or something. Yeah, entirely. Um, and you guys can come on my show. Yeah. yeah. I want to be on would love that. Y'all think of something sexual to talk about. Ooh. We'll figure something out. We'll yeah. figure it out yeah. for I sure. Y'all tell me when and we'll make it happen. <laughs> okay. Yay. I love it. Uh, cheers, ladies. Cheers. 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 Yes. Yes. Here we thank go. Thank you guys Yay. for having me. Mm. All right. Mm -mm. So everybody get on, uh, like this episode. If yes. you heard something today that you think resonates with somebody in your network, or you just want to share <clears throat> what's going on with Dirty Minds or Explore Box, uh, share this episode, rate and review us. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.